Back then, I thought it was simple. We just had to get the evidence to catch him. I didn't realise the whole world around him had to change before the truth could come out. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're discussing the untold story of Jimmy Savile. For this video, we're looking at the horrific crimes of one of Britain's most beloved and now disgraced media personalities. Jimmy Savile was a huge figure, but he was also an enigma. Have you watched Netflix's docuseries Jimmy Savile, A British Horror Story? What's your reaction? Let us know in the comments. Career in radio and television. I like records, pop music. In 1958, Leeds native Jimmy Savile began his music career as a DJ at Radio Luxembourg. On January 1, 1964, BBC premiered the first episode of Top of the Pops, one of their most watched programs. Jimmy Savile hosted the episode and would go on to essentially be the face of the show through July 2006. And it's coming up not just yet in a second now. Savile would go on to host and present in other BBC shows like Tyne Tees Television's Young at Heart and Clunk Click. He headed up so many programmes in the BBC. Welcome indeed to the first of 19 programmes. In May 1975, Savile got his own show on BBC called Jim'll Fix It. Children would write letters to the show asking if Jim would fix it so they could make their dreams a reality. Like driving James Bond's car. BBC received thousands of letters every week, and soon, millions of viewers were tuning in. People write in, tell Jim what they want fixed and he will make their dreams come true. This made Savile a childhood hero to many, and something like a Santa Claus with all the wish granting. After Savile granted their wish, the kids would receive a coveted medal, saying, Jim fixed it for me. I did think it was the crown jewels when I first got it, of course. Charity fundraising and volunteer work. Savile quickly became a household name, and he used that recognition to regularly raise money for charities in the UK. In 1968, after years of volunteering and fundraising at Leeds General Infirmary, Savile asked to become a porter. I work two days a week as a porter at Leeds Infirmary. It was an odd request, but the hospital took him up on the offer, and he happily transported patients between wards. In 1981, he established the Jimmy Savile Stoke Mandeville Hospital Trust and the Leeds-based Jimmy Savile Charitable Trust three years later. There's charity work obviously went down very well. Savile was appointed as a fundraiser for Stoke Mandeville Hospital in 1980, and over three years, he raised millions for the hospital's new National Spinal Injury Center. So I've got time to try and get hold of 10 million pounds with the help of my lovely friends in Great Britain. In 1987, he was appointed to a management board for the psychiatric hospital Broadmoor despite having no professional medical experience. I have got very formal qualifications. I've been alive for a long time. I've learned a lot of things for a long time. The following year, he was made chair of a task force overseeing management. Shockingly, he was given his own rooms and set of keys, plus the authority to make management decisions. Savile had unrestricted access to the entire hospital. You do spend a lot of time in hospitals though, don't you? They are my favorite places. Public image and celebrity. Being a regular face on television through his hosting gigs and charity work, Jimmy Savile appeared to be a man of the people. His working-class background added to his likability, and he charmed his way into the hearts of a nation. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Savile! Part of his mass appeal was his peculiar flamboyant personality. He sported blonde hair, tracksuits, jewelry, and often smoked a cigar. But beneath this eccentric persona was a sinister pattern of behavior. Savile was a prolific predator hiding in plain sight. Oh, this is lovely. Rubbing elbows with the British royal family certainly helped him maintain his family-friendly image. He became friends with former Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, who later lobbied for him to be knighted. I thought you were going to fix my getting into number 10. And despite hesitation from others, Savile was knighted by both the Queen and Pope in 1990. Prince Charles of Wales came to Savile for advice, both on politics and on his marriage. They were asking his opinion on things. Personal life. Despite being everywhere in the media, Savile managed to keep the details of his personal life private. Naturally, interviewers attempted to convince him to open up about any romantic partners, but were met with Savile's usual distractions and denials. We're talking about a life, are we, in the 60s and 70s of lots of lovers? 
Oh, that's a long time ago. I've forgotten now. He was a proud bachelor and spent most of his time with his mother Agnes, whom he affectionately called the Duchess until her death in 1972. When she died, yeah. you sat with her yeah. for five days. That's what it said in the papers. From the 1970s on, rumors began to spread about Jimmy and underage girls, and it became almost a passing joke in popular culture. The only time you punish yourself is when you are with young ladies. However, many people on the inside knew that there was truth there. In 1990, journalist Lynn Barber interviewed Jimmy Savile in a now infamous profile for The Independent, where she directly asked him about the rumors. True to his reputation, Savile dismissed them. It was a very widespread rumor. Documentarian Louis Theroux brought up the rumors while interviewing Savile for an episode of a series When Louis Met in April 2000. Again, Savile denied them. How do they know whether I am or not? Local police looked into allegations in 2007 and again in 2008, but concluded there was insufficient evidence. Jimmy Savile's death. On October 9, 2011, Jimmy Savile died at age 84. The country mourned their fallen hero, and thousands attended his funeral on November 9. Two days later, the BBC aired a tribute special featuring colleagues praising the late media personality. Yeah, of course he was eccentric, but he wasn't a loner. He was just an ordinary guy. Though rumors were widely spread about Savile's behavior throughout his career, it wasn't until after his death that substantial investigations were launched. In November 2011, BBC's Newsnight began an investigation into Savile, but before their findings were broadcast, an editor pulled the plug. Suddenly, we're told that there's a problem with our story. A few months later, the Sunday Mirror exposed the axed investigation. Investigations. As the scandal grew, an ITV documentary in 2012, Exposure, The Other Side of Jimmy Savile, featured accusations of abuse from several women. And then I went to find my colleague and told him what had happened, and he sort of laughed about it, really. As it turned out, however, this was just the tip of the iceberg. The BBC and National Health Service began their own investigations. We have asked the BBC Investigations Unit to make direct contact with all the police forces in receipt of allegations and offer to help them investigate these matters. The Director General of the BBC appointed former High Court Judge Dame Janet Smith to review Savile's activities while he worked there. Her report, published three years later, revealed that Savile had abused dozens of people on BBC premises and that some BBC staff were aware but afraid to complain to management. There were very few women in management positions. Women found it difficult to report sexual harassment. Meanwhile, police were also investigating and in November 2012, announced allegations of abuse on a, quote, staggering and unprecedented scale. The Metropolitan Police is coordinating a vast inquiry, looking into more than 450 allegations of abuse. From 1955 to 2009, Savile assaulted 450 people, many of them very young. His growing fame allowed him access to vulnerable viewers, children and hospital patients. We're talking about people who went in uh, as uh, patients uh, and some of them came out abused victims. He preyed upon young guests and audience members at his BBC shows Top of the Pops and Jim will fix it even groping at least one victim on camera. You know, it's a bit like, ooh, I don't think I like it. Savile also took advantage of patients at the several hospitals he'd been given access to. At Leeds, he had his own room, and for Broadmoor, a set of keys. He'd regularly visited Duncroft approved school for girls, where he would take teenage girls for rides in his car. I remember seeing him driving off with three girls from the school. A year after his death, Savile's family members decided to remove his gravestone from Scarborough Cemetery. Jimmy Savile's gravestone was dismantled and removed, having only been unveiled two weeks ago. Many of his honors were stripped, charities named after him were closed down, and other memorials were removed. The University of Bedfordshire has withdrawn the honorary degree it's awarded to Jimmy Savile. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. In the media, a number of books and documentaries have chronicled Jimmy Savile's life, some praising the British TV icon, others investigating the years of lies and pain he inflicted on others. 
I think the Jimmy Savile outrage undoubtedly has a legacy. In 2020, the BBC announced a drama series about the life and crimes of Jimmy Savile. The Reckoning, starring Steve Coogan, is set to release in 2022, though it has already drawn some criticism for its subject matter. The purpose of this drama is to explore how Savile's offending went unchecked for so long. On April 6, 2022, Netflix released Jimmy Savile, A British Horror Story, a two-part docuseries featuring archive footage of the disgraced media personality and interviews with survivors and whistleblowers. In all the media attention surrounding the scandal, it's important to give voices to the victims, something that was not afforded to them in the past. Being able to lock things away mm. was the way I coped. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.